I check on B, on here B, is before before Psalm twenty one before all right before the judgment Um, the coffin be one hundred Wow. That be in the art in our lifetime. Thank you, Maxine. Extremely 
mastery. Simple, oh, yeah. extremely nice at all churches where that happens. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know. Only happen one in one hundred sixty. <laughs> Called the Neville said the other night. They let him that they happens. They to. Because yeah. he gets so mad yeah. he thinks that he needs to come home. Yeah, and I have to tell him that he needs to stay there because I can't take care of him. Right. But you know what? He's doing okay. He's in a good place. Good facility. Yes. Oh, that's the best facility. Okay. I would, I would hate to be in one of them here in Cedar to be church. Sure. You know, they have people have to be. Yeah. But, I love the way they're treated. The food is great. Everything's great. Good. The nurses and the CNAs all like you. Yeah. So it's good. That's good Everything's to hear. Good. Well, keep me posted if anything changes. Okay. Thank you so much. Are they done? Is that all we're having? Oh, no. We need a lot more. Steven, or Alex, you and Steven can help with the chairs. Put more chairs up. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good. You're so good. Thank you. How are things? Good. You think you're going okay? Yeah. We're doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Getting older, aren't we? Oh yes, we are. Dang it! I, I love your things on the computer. <laughs> you know, you and Doug are just so. Good. Thank, thank you for all y'all do to help me. Do much. We don't do much. Yeah. I appreciate what you do. <laughs> you know. I'm so glad you're getting better. Yeah, coming along. That's good. I mean, it's not great. My knees are bad. So that's the next thing I've got to look at. But still, I still have a hitch in there. 
go. But I'm doing better than what I was. So I'm grateful for that. We're grateful for everything we have. Yes. Yes, for sure. Yes. He's doing okay, you know, to be expected. Yeah. So, yeah. I go down and that's right. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. You have to be so careful. Yes, I do. There's traffic. So much traffic on the freeway. Yeah, and by the time I get home, I'm so tired. Oh, yeah. I just go fall in my chair and fall asleep. <laughs> my house is. The world's uncreated. It's tail back. I'm thinking, so I'm sure you gotta get another one. Get it straight. So it does this morning. I says, I'm overwhelmed. This house is just like, ah. Uh, it's where I'm not trying to get it down, which is terrible. It's funny. Yeah. Says, now, Mom, you better get it done. Yeah. And I says, well, I can do only what I can do. And she says, but you gotta get up and do more. And I says, you don't. She doesn't understand. She doesn't understand. She doesn't understand. No. She was, in her own. Yeah. You know, she she always wants better for our parents if they don't realize that. The, the, yes. We're having to take care of this. For yeah. Us. Hey there. Good morning, how are you? Good, how are you? It's me. Jeff's still good all the time, all the time. He's always doing something. Crazy. Oh, I just don't want to be with him and something that's causing problems. Yeah. Because Brooklyn took it when there's 10 on their uh, team. Good morning. Track team. Oh, yeah. Hi, yeah. Kathy. Yeah. 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 And she came in second. Oh, and, good. Um, one junior came in above her, not even the seniors. And their team took, um, what she said, she came in 13 to the first one. You know, so she's getting, she's getting fast, real fast. She's a good runner. So she, she yes. is. She's a good yeah, runner. That's awesome. Yeah, so she's yeah. trying. That, yeah. That's her outlet. Yeah. You know? Yes. And so I'm so excited. Yeah, that's good. But she was so scary. Jeff was so fun with his wife and the little boy and everybody. They caused problems when they are there. Yeah. And so he even, that's called, right. he even called her a coach and he said he needs to be there. And the coach knows his wife. And she's, she knows she's a troublemaker to coach her. He's always preaching to me, you know God has it. You need to join our church because God forgives. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, they can, if they can live through that kind of stuff, I know. I know. That is too bad. I don't know. We keep him in our prayers, though. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Y'all, I keep you in my prayers, too. <laughs> you and Dad. Yes. We appreciate that. Thanks. Thanks. That's really neat. Hi, Sam. Yeah. Are you beautiful How are you? as usual? Oh, no, I'm good. Beautiful. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> you're so nice. Thank you very much. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad to be here, too. Oh, yeah. 
bet Scott's crying. Oh, yeah. I'm very happy. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. 
thought. Done, done. Him. He can I.
Thank you.
Good morning, brothers and sisters. We're happy to see all of you out this morning. Welcome to the Johnson Fort Worth Sacrament meeting. I'm Brother Staley. I'll be conducting, and Bishop Gallego is presiding at our meeting today. A uh, couple of announcements. Uh, Mission prep tonight at 5 o'clock at the State Center. Um, also coming up this Saturday is our Board Wood Hall, so anyone who is needing to get wood for themselves or willing to help us go cut and haul wood uh, for some of the members of our board that need wood for the winter, meet at the church at 8, 8 a.m. on Saturday, bring your chainsaws, anything, your trucks, trailers, anything you can use to help us cut and haul wood, and if you don't have any of that stuff, just bring your work gloves and, and come help us out. Also, Ward Choir will be this afternoon at 2 p.m. at the Gallegos House. And uh, coming up tomorrow, uh, our ward is in charge of the temple cleaning, so we really need um, help with that. So anyone who's able, I believe there's a sign-up sheet on the clerk's office door, and there will probably be some sign-up sheets going around again today in the classes. So. If you're at all able to help with that, go ahead and sign up and uh, help us clean the temple tomorrow. Um, let's see. I believe that is all we have as far as announcements. So we're going to go ahead and start the meeting um, with our opening hymn, number 21, Come Listen to a Prophet's Voice. And then Dean Gallego is going to say our opening prayer. Amen. Amen. Okay, Brother Hunt no? has just a little bit of state business for us, so I'm going to turn the time over to him now. Good morning. Um, the following have been released as state high counselors. Brother Scott Bond and Brother Paul Elton. All who wish to thank them for their service, please do so by the end of the day. The following have been called as Phoenix State High Counselors. If they are present, will they please stand as their names read? Brother Jeremy Roger Griffiths and Brother Jacob Neil Burroughs. All in favor, please show by the uplifted hand. Any opposed by the same sign? Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to uh, the administration of the sacrament. We are going to sing hymn number 185, Reverently and Meekly Now, and then uh, the young man who holds the Aaronic Priesthood will administer the sacrament. <laughs>
and run the mission. Um, wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, what, a, what a wonderful experience we had doing that. So even though we didn't want to be housing coordinators, we found wonderful blessings from doing what we were asked to do. Um, when I left, I chose, well, Elder Anderson, I guess his brother Anderson now, he's been released, so he's not Elder Anderson anymore. But when we chose a scripture, um, actually, I think I chose the scripture because he just left it up to me. This is the scripture I chose. For we labor diligently to write, to persuade our children, and also our brethren to believe in Christ, and to be reconciled to God. For we know that it is by grace that we are saved, after all we can do. We talk of Christ, we rejoice in Christ, we preach of Christ, and we prophesy of Christ, and we write according to our promises, that our children may know to what source they may look for remission of their sins. I want you to know that the people of Alabama love Christ. That was something unusual for me to see how truly they loved the Savior. They're very open about talking about Christ. Um, they are not open to hear more about Christ, but they do love the Savior. They talk about miracles, which was amazing to me that they would be so open to whoever wanted to listen to them about the miracles that have been in their lives. Uh, the, the interesting thing to me was that 51% of Alabama people go to church. And I don't know if you know what the percentage is here in Utah, but I looked it up. 53% in Utah. Isn't that unusual? They have a Wednesday Bible study. And everybody goes to church on Wednesday night to their Bible study. I thought that was really neat. That they would um, sacrifice their time to go and hear about the Savior. They are good and righteous people. And I want to read you a letter that Elder, uh, Brother Von J. Featherstone wrote back in the 80s. He was kind of like a they didn't call him that then, but like a regional rep for the South, for the church. Um, and this is what he wrote. At, at the time that he wrote it, there was only one temple in the South, and that was in Atlanta. The Atlanta temple is the first temple in the South. I can see temples in Charlotte, Columbia, Birmingham, Jackson, Nashville, and in Louisiana and Arkansas. And just so you know, We've got temples in all those places. This was in 85 when he wrote this. I can see in my mind's eye great hosts of converts to exceed a million members in the South. We will baptize people in the tens of thousands. These members, traditional pro Protestant and Catholics, Christians, are, be are being prepared right now. We will baptize pivotal leaders and their influence will reach out. Non-members will want to know about the church. These people will call the missionaries and will be and will desire to be taught. The missionaries will be teaching large groups from early morning until late at night. Entire congregations will accept this message. Ten times tens of thousands will be baptized into the Lord's true church. I know that the Spirit of the Lord is brooding over the South. What a beautiful prophecy. So all you young men, you young women, you senior couples, that's what you should get called to Alabama. Oh, because this is what's going to happen in Alabama. Entire congregations will join the church. I'm waiting for the day. I, I can see it. Because the people are good and righteous people. They just need to be opened up to more light in their life. Oh, one of my favorite scriptures 
that I've thought about over the years from when I was a teenager. This is Doctrine and Covenants 18, 10 through 16. Remember the worth of souls is great in the sight of God. For behold, the Lord your Redeemer suffereth death in the flesh, wherefore he suffered the pains of all men, so that all men might repent and come unto him. And he hath risen from the dead, that he might bring all men unto him on conditions of repentance. Wherefore, you are called to cry repentance unto this people. And if it be so be that you should labor all your days in crying repentance unto this people, and bring, say that be one soul unto me, how great shall be your joy with him in the kingdom of my Father. And now, if your joy will be great with one soul that you have brought unto me in the kingdom of my Father, how great will be your joy if you bring many souls unto me. Now, as a young teenager, I just thought, my gosh, i got to go on a mission someday and teach the gospel. But that is, as I, I became a mother, I realized, you know what? I am raising children in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and their soul is precious unto God. And I'm teaching them how to repent, how to come unto God. So, my goodness, I've got at least six souls that I've brought unto God. Uh, so, all of you mothers and fathers out there thinking that someday you're going to be a missionary, no. You're a missionary now. You're a missionary to your children, to your grandchildren. Maybe a missionary to your grandparents, or your great-grandparents, or your brothers and sisters. How great will be your joy if you bring them into the kingdom of God. So you know, every member is a missionary. You don't have to be a called missionary. You don't have to be a senior missionary. You don't have to be a mom or a dad. Because we've been told for how many years, every member a missionary. Young missionaries, my gosh, I have to tell you, I think some of the most wonderful, wonderful missionaries have served now that. And I'm sure that wherever you serve, you knew of absolutely amazing missionaries that served. And I think that God um, knows how that will change their life if they will serve a mission. It's worth it. It's worth it to serve a mission. It's worth it to, uh, no, I, I should say, sacrifice your time, but it isn't really sacrificing your time. As Brother Anderson always says, it's not a sacrifice, it's an investment. It's an investment. Senior missionaries, I want to read you a quote by Elder Rasman. If I can find it here. Oh. Oh, that's not it either. Oh, here it is. As an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, think of that. He's an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what he's telling us. I ask you to serve as missionaries in the gathering of Israel and perhaps even serve again. We need you. We need you. You are, are grateful. We are grateful to you seniors for the lives you have led and the examples you have been in your homes, wards, and states. I now invite you to take your know-how coupled with your time-honored testimonies and go on to show them. I also promise you that as you serve, you will feel the love of the Lord in your life. He will know you and how great shall be your joy. Your dedicated service to Jesus Christ will inspire and bless your family, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren. Peace and love will be multiplied in their lives for years to come. So seniors, is that something you want in your life? Uh, I do want to tell you that everybody has a time and a season for doing things. Just like it says in Ecclesiastes, there's a time to live, a time to die, a time to I don't know, serve the Lord. <laughs> I can't quote that exactly. But 
But I want you to know that whatever the season you are in at this time in your life, the Lord wants you to rejoice and to do good in this life. That's part of that little couplet that, you know, there's a time and a season for everything. At the very end of it, that's what he says. He wants us to rejoice and to do good in this life. Now, everything that we are doing right now is to prepare us for the second coming of the Lord, is it not? We're doing everything that we can for the Savior to come and be with us again. So, when will he come? I wish I could give you a date. But as the scriptures say, no man knoweth, only our Lord God. But we can see the times and the seasons. I think we're getting really close to picking that very right apple for when he comes. Because it will be soon. So what does he want us to do? Because he needs a people that are prepared and ready for him. We can't just twiddle our fingers and our, our thumbs and say, well, he'll get here any day when the world is wicked enough. No, I think what he's waiting for is for us to be righteous enough. And in Doctrine and Covenants 20, 19 and 23, it says, Learn of me and listen to my words. Walk in the meekness of my spirit, and ye shall have peace in me. President Nelson has said, In the coming days it will not be possible to survive spiritually without the guiding, directing, comforting, and constant influence of the Holy Ghost. I want you to, not, not by raising hands, but to think in your own self. Do you have that constant guidance? Do you have the directing, comforting, and constant influence of the Holy Ghost? You can't get that. You can't get there. Prayer, scripture study, continue church. Turning your heart to Christ. He wants us to come to know him on a very personal level. The last thing I want to tell you is a quote by Joseph Smith. And although he was talking about baptism for the dead, this is our rallying cry, I think, for when the Savior comes. Shall we not go on in such a great cause? Go forward and not backward. Courage, brethren, and on, on to victory. Let your hearts rejoice and be exceeding glad, and let the earth break forth into, into singing. I want you to know that I look forward to the day that the Savior comes. I know that it will be hard things that we'll have to endure. But if you look past the hard things to the joyous day when the Savior with his multitudes will come, how great will be that day. I love my Savior. I'm so grateful to have served the mission. I'm grateful for all of you who have come so far. I shouldn't have told you that we were <laughs> even going to have this meeting. You wouldn't have had to come so far, but we love you. We love our members in our board here. It is such a blessing to have a board building that we can meet in and such wonderful people to meet around. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Is planning on being twinkled. <laughs> <laughs> That's her first choice. We're so grateful to be here. We're grateful for those of you who have come. Family, I think I have 19 of my grandkids here. I was 
inspired to this dramatic tradition. A couple of years before we left on a mission, we had retired and I made mean, I'm going and she said, oh, I better ruin the piano just in case. Just in case when we get out there, we don't have a piano player, I can help play. So for several years she practiced it. The simplified hymns, uh, hoping though all the time that she wouldn't have to break her to play. When we got to Alexander City, the first thing they asked us was, Can you play the piano? And Sister Anderson, so dedicated to play every week, even sometimes only one hand. Um, and every time new missionaries, about every six weeks or so, we get to the missionary. First thing she would ask is, can you play the piano? And nobody came that could play the piano. Sister Anderson played the piano for two years, very dedicated, um, often very fearful. Uh, we would spend some time in the church where she could practice the hymns and work the next week. She did a wonderful job. She was inspired to, to be able to do that, to be able to bless the city. Um, we have Friends here from Washington on their way to Indy. It was a couple of certain, I don't know how many stops between Washington and Indy, but or Indy, but it did. It was such a dear couple that we served with in the United States. They being on the mission was very fun. We were really about that one. Uh, my mother showed up this morning. <laughs>
We were set to leave Alabama just a few weeks ago and back to this beautiful high desert country. We you know, in some small way we made a difference. We do miss our friends there though. We had a wonderful, wonderful little branch that we served in. They were very spiritual. They were loving and dedicated to their Savior. We will miss the green of Alabama, the rain of Alabama, the people of Alabama. But I won't miss the bugs of Alabama. <laughs> there are bugs everywhere. Fire <laughs> ants in particular. <laughs> we do consider our, our call to Alexander a uh, direct um, result of our desire to serve. We've always wanted to serve since we were married um, some 48 years ago. And it was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful opportunity it was for us. Um, it seemed to go so quickly. We were just there, we were just leaving yesterday. We were just arriving in our apartment. We lifted up the, the mat in front of our Apartment. We took the key that somebody had left there. We opened the door and walked into the apartment wondering what we were going to do for the next 18 months here. Shortly thereafter, we got a call from one of the members of the Holy Land Branch to invite us over for dinner. And um, it seems like yesterday, just yesterday. It reminds me of a song that's been up in my head for about a month now. Um, include the shining moments. Don't let them pass you by. You know that song, that hymn. Improve the shining moments. Don't let them pass you by. The second verse goes like this. Time flies on wings of lightning. We cannot call it back. It comes and passes forward along its onward track. And if we are not mindful, our chance will slip away. For life is quick in passing, tis as a single day. We're so grateful that for a very short time, we had the chance to serve the mission in our country city. It was less than as a single day for us. We're grateful that we. we took that opportunity when things were right for us. Part of our mission, as Sister Anderson talked about, was being called the MLS missionary, member leader support. And we were blessed to be in a very small branch in the of Alabama. We were loving it. Until we got a call to serve as housing coordinators. I've never had more stressful days in my life than worried about what the missionaries were going to be kicked out of their apartment, or we were going to have the apartment that the mission president wanted to try. So many things we didn't know about in taking care of 120 apartments. But we did get to know over 240 beautiful, wonderful missionaries. Many, many more than 240 over the other time. Um, what a blessing that was. Um, we were blessed instead of moving to the big city of Birmingham. You know, the mission home was we were able to stay on our ranch. Um, anyway, we had some fun and exciting experiences. I just I want to share one with you just for fun. We often got texts, texts and emails and calls from the sisters and the others about things they needed in their farmers, the things that were happening. Uh, there weren't very many of us that kind of washed clothes correctly. None of them. You have to be um, We're talking about the elders, not the sisters. Anyway, one evening I received this text message from some elders in Southern Alabama down in Mobile area. Um, they texted and said, Brother Anderson, we need a new fire extinguisher for under the sink. I texted back, We can get you one. Why do you need a new one? Did you use the one you had? Elders, well, we had to put out a fire in our snow last night. Me, oh, 
What happened? Well, we were warming up each in the oven and the box caught on fire. <laughs> Me. <laughs> I actually had a fire extinguisher. Mark one and others just don't mix together. Others apparently not on Broyo. <laughs> but we learned a good lesson. And the pizza was still okay. <laughs> and the oven is still in good shape. Me, have a wonderful evening, Ellis. <laughs> share with you a little bit about how cool our missionaries were. One day we were putting in uh, an apartment of missionaries from uh, one area to another and it was the middle of July and it was quite humid and hot there and it was an upstairs apartment. And um, we always brought a cooler of water and hot and stuff for the elders and sisters. I was resting at the bottom of the chair the stairs, which I seem to do a lot of. Um, and I was having a drink, and I offered a pop to one of the elders as he was going up the stairs. He says, Oh, no, thank you. And he went on up the point to carry it. He came back down, and he says, You know what? I didn't want that, that drink. And I said, No. And he said, I really do like root beer. I like Sprite. I love it. A good root beer flow. But after I got my mission call, I decided to get up and give up a few things. A few things that I really like. Pop, Christian candy bars. I said, oh. Do you know why? He said, Then he said, I know I was going to be asking people to change their lives, to give up things they really like to make some important commitments. And I just wanted to know how they were going to feel so that I could feel the same way. I was so impressed with the level of commitment missionaries have, the dedication of their faith. We had some totally committed missionaries in our members. They couldn't do things that. They couldn't clean the bathrooms, but they could sure teach about Jesus Christ. Let me tell you a little bit about our mission person, Brother and Sister Chimara. They were both from Zimbabwe, natives in Zimbabwe. They were both converts in their teenage years. And later, very much later in life, they moved and ended up in Utah. Not a lot long after being baptized, President Chibosa had a dream about going on a mission. He wanted to go on a mission. And after some some, some sincere prayer and thought, he decided that's what he was going to do. Before his family, he was worried about his parents. They were not members. He was worried about how he was going to go forward his mission. Well, he got his, he got his call. He was very excited. And he was walking outside his home with his papers in his hand. And some neighbors next door, not members, um, calling over and asking what all those papers were in his hand. He excitedly, excitedly told them that he had got the mission call to serve Jesus Christ in England. And then he proceeded to tell them about it what he was going to do. And they asked the question, well, how are you going to afford that? How is that possible? He said, well, I am going to have to buy these clothes or this is what it's going to cost me to do. And these people, not members, just neighbors, volunteered to pray for me. This, this mission, this clothing, what a blessing in his life. The challenge was overcome. He was able to serve an honorable and successful mission in England. You know, that many of our missionaries face the challenge. We face many challenges while we're in that 
most of us face challenges every day just by working and trying to survive. Now, which don't drive you to be society present, they have their fair share of challenges. Sometimes, sometimes we might think our calling is just a little too hard. We don't have enough time. How can we do that to make ends meet? Sometimes we tend to complain and criticize just a little bit. Do you ever compare your situation to others? I'd like to tell you a little bit about what we were taught, the privilege of what we taught in its own conference with missionaries. It was about the four C's, A, B, C, and C's. Four C's of don't, I guess it might be a way to to say Don't compare, don't criticize, don't complain, don't cause contention. This was one of the messages that President and Sister Chibola shared with the missionaries. The first don't was <coughs> compare. It does no good to compare. It is comparison that often, often makes us proud. We become prideful because we feel the pleasure of being above or better than the rest. As missionaries, we were taught today that we do not need to compete with other missionaries. Once the comparison was gone, the pride was gone, and missionary work would go much better. Many of our received hardships in life come from when we compare ourselves with others, wishing for more than we have, or for different circumstances, causing us constantly to focus on our problems. Elder Cornish of the 70s said, Please, my beloved brothers and sisters, we must stop comparing, comparing ourselves to others. We torture ourselves needlessly by competing and comparing. We falsely judge our self-worth by the things we do or do not have. The only opinion, the only opinion of us that matters is what our Heavenly Father thinks of us. Please sincerely ask him what he thinks of you. Don't compare. The second don't. Don't criticize. It should come as no surprise that one of the adversaries' tactics in the latter days is stirring up hatred among the children of men. He loves to see us criticize each other. Or make fun or take advantage of our neighbors. Generally, pick on each other. The Book of Mormon is clear. From where all anger, malice, greed, and hate come, in 2 Nephi 28, Nephi prophesied that in the last day, the devil would rage in the hearts of the children of men and stir them up to anger against that which is good. It seems interesting that the first principles that Jesus Christ chose to teach to teach his newly called apostles are those that center around the way we treat each other. Could this be because the way we treat each other is the foundation of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Let's open our arms to each other, accept each other for who we want. Assume everyone is doing the best they can. Look for ways to be helped, leave quiet messages of love, or encourage instead of being destructive and negative. And about criticizing and fault finding, the author Robert West wrote Nothing is easier than fault finding. No talent, no self denial, no brains are required to set up and become their own business. The next don't, don't complain. We've all been around people who are constantly complaining. And they are no fun. I love what Elder Orson Whitney once said. The spirit of the gospel is optimistic. If trusting God and looks on the bright side of things, the opposite or pessimistic spirit drags men down 
and away from God, looks on the dark side, murmurs, complains, is slow to yield obedience. We should honor the Savior's declaration to be of good cheer. The next don't, don't cause contention. My brother, President Nelson, recently said in the papers, you have your agency to choose contention or reconciliation. I urge you to choose to be a peacemaker now and always. One of the essential, easiest ways to identify a true follower of Jesus Christ is how compassionately that person treats other people. One, the Savior's message is clear. His true disciples build, lift, encourage, persuade, and inspire. No matter how difficult the situation, true disciples of Christ are peacemakers. God has invited all of us to come unto Him, to come unto Christ, black and white, bond and free, male and female. There is no room for any, there is room for everyone. However, there is no room for prejudice, condemnation, intention of any kind. What a great message to us. That was a, that was a, a good lesson for missionaries from our country. Let me tell you one more quick story. Ask me about it because it's a really good one about water buffalo and lions. Okay? One of the neat things is that Anderson said that we, we, we witnessed in Alabama was miracles. In the beginning of the meetings, we shared miracles. We were asked to share miracles. What a joy that was to see the missionaries and their faces light up as they share the, mission, the miracles that came to them down the week and how it did. How it, did. it was just it was a marvelous thing to watch people to see how the miracles happen every day. We could get a looking for miracles and found miracles in our lives every day. I think we deserve miracles. I think we're out there for us to have. We know that faith proceeds the miracles. And that prayer often is a result. Our miracles are often a result of our prayer and that's good. Brothers and sisters, we consider our time now and now to be the best of I remember watching my grandparents go on a mission to Kansas. I remember visiting them there and how proud I was of them. That was back in the 70s. Both sister and sister. My parents have served missions after their retirement in a variety of places around the world. And we know we were blessed because of that. We know that our family is blessed with one of our missionaries. You know, it was only a short time that we served, but we saw such a great blessing. We appreciate our, our parents and our heritage. My mother of 93, my dad's mother of 93, she's been listening via Zoom. What a great example they have been. I know with a little way, we can and we see miracles every day. I know that God will intervene in our lives every day if we ask. I know that we can improve. We can overcome our natural abilities, our natural ability to complain or criticize or compare by merely to instead lift, encourage, persuade, and inspire. Remember to disciple of Jesus Christ, our peacemaker. I know who my Savior is.
happy to have them home and back in the work with us. So uh, we're going to close the meeting by singing hymn number 22. We listen to a prophet, prophet's voice, and we're just going to sing the first verse of that. Um, and then Justin Gallego will give us our closing prayer. a chance to be able to hear the testimony of the Andersons. We're grateful for their service and their testimony and the life that they have shared with us and the people in Alabama. We're grateful for their testimonies that we've heard and the experiences they've shared with us and the insights they've given us and the invitations they've given us and help us to be able to consider these things and apply them to our life and follow the Spirit and know what it is we can improve on. We're grateful for the miracles that are all around us and help us to be aware of them, to see the hand of God in our lives on a daily basis. And we're grateful for the chance to be able to be here and worship together and to feel the Spirit and help us to be able to keep that Spirit with us for the remainder of the day and throughout the week as well. And we're grateful for all of the blessings that we have and we're especially grateful for our Savior Jesus Christ and the example that he is for us and and the sacrifice that he made for us and help us to be able to be more like him. And we love you and we say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.